Please welcome the president of CJ Affiliate, Walid Alatrachi. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to, good morning. Everybody's attentive. Not too much drinking last night, maybe. Uh, well, welcome to CJU 18. So I will not uh, take a lot of your time, uh, but before I get started, I'd like to thank all the folks who come in year in and year out for your support of this event. Many of you, several years, I know lots of you have do, been doing this uh, 10 years plus now. Some approaching 15 years. I'd also like to thank all the folks who are making it here for the first time. Uh, I think you'll find CJU to be an a very productive event and a ton of fun. And hopefully you can manage both at the same time and not tip over. Uh, I have to pace myself. Uh, the, um, the other thing is I'd like to thank all the, the people who have made the trip from around the globe. Uh, some of these are more than trips, they're treks. And uh, we have over 20 countries represented at CJU this year. So again, thank you for all the support. Really appreciate it. <clears throat> so I don't know if you all know this, but CJ is celebrating its 20th anniversary as a company this year. And over the last couple of decades as an industry, we've gone through a tremendous amount of change. And there's probably no good adjective for tremendous in front of change or huge or anything else to describe it. Uh, we, early days, we've gone through the dot-com bubble. We've all been part of the exponential rise of e-commerce. Uh, we've had the advent of the smartphone. It's created businesses. It's changed how we do business. It's changed ch daily lives. It's changed society, ultimately. So I think 2018 is shaping up to be a pretty significant year in our history, actually. There we go. Some say that we're in the, in the midst of a privacy revolution, right? And uh, that's, I think that's a pretty fair statement. If it's too big of a statement, I would say we're minimally in the midst of a privacy evolution with the, the biggest D you could put in front of it. Privacy has a lot of different, different definitions or maybe potentially overly complex definitions. I think privacy at the heart of it is control of your personal information and control of your personal information that's consistent with your interests and I'd say your values. So this consumer awakening that's happening, and we're all part of it, we're all part of the public, is really requiring us as companies to rethink our data practices and obviously it's driving new regulation and action by firms. I think the most uh, important of the regulation we've seen so far is the GDPR, General Data Protection Regulation. The General Data Protection Regulation, or GDPR, I won't say all that, um, is really redefining what uh, personal information is, who can have it, and how it's handled. Any company that does business with EU residents is affected. But I think it's taking us into further and further places. One thing I should say as a company, we believe and have always believed in the critical responsibility that we have with data. So as a company, CJ, Epsilon, Conversant, we meet with industry regulators, authorities, to understand these new laws. We do everything we can to understand and communicate what we're learning and potential implications for that. We work diligently to develop solutions that meet your specific business needs, and they can be different by business. And we try to think as far ahead as humanly possible to future-proof our solutions. With the GDPR, I'd say we probably develop what I would call a suite of privacy solutions, but I think there's two things that matter most. One is we worked with the IAB EU to develop the criteria for the consent management platforms, and I'm proud to say as a company, we're really the first affiliate to launch such a solution in market. The other thing is we developed cookie-less tracking using our proprietary event ID, and that, that preserves tracking under the GDPR when a CJ cookie cannot be placed or read. More coming, right? So we're in the moment of Apple ITP 2.0. Um, it's going to happen, in my opinion, over the next several days. It could happen as early today as, as today. 
Apple's uh, holding its special event. ITP 2.0 removes visibility to partner transactions on Safari, mobile and desktop, right? Now, the good news is that when we developed our cookie list tracking, we'd, we'd only we didn't develop with only GDPR in mind, but it works for Apple ITP 2.0, and it works for a Firefox, which announced its update is coming in January. So lots of change. The other great news is, from an implementation standpoint, it only takes a few minutes of tech team's time. So this is really easy to do. To date, we have over 750 advertisers who have enabled cookie list tracking, so they're not worried about ITP 2.0. They're focused on their business, and they're focused on Q4, like they should be. However, I, I feel an obligation to make a public announcement. There are some delinquent, should I say delinquent? Is that a bad word? Advertisers out there. All right, look, you can be a delinquent, and you can, and you can change. I did, right? So, uh, <laughs> uh, so, uh, there are some. And understand that you're going to force your partners into a situation where they're going to deprioritize your brand. And many kind of have flatly stated, in my opinion, that they're not going to promote your brand. So do something about it. Act now. Pick up the phone. Call your tech team and say, get this done. Again, it's a few minutes of your time. If, you, if there's something you don't understand, uh, talk to a CJ person. They're incredibly well versed. Uh, we do have a couple of sessions in the Discovery Lab about it. Um, I'm not sure you can go because generally I think they're now uh, sold out, but get it done. Don't make something that is that ultimately will be a bad or complex event for you when this takes minutes of time. More to come again. Uh, if you don't know, uh, California is uh, has a new privacy law pegged for 2020, so that's going to unfold as we go here. Again, as we learn more, we'll let you know. Uh, some say as California goes, so does the country, at least it used to. In this instance, I think it's probably you know, not unlikely. But just because of privacy does not mean we stop innovating. Right? We've got to meet our customer needs, which include privacy. But we, do, we still have to deliver great experiences, and we still have to better match their interests as we build our businesses. So the consumer doesn't go away. It's still all about the consumer or customer-centric marketing. I put this together so that I could, we could frame, or I could frame, how we think about customer-centric marketing. Because we really think of it as three parts to a whole that all works together. So you can kind of make sense of the things that we do and why we do them. There's three parts. Insights, understanding the consumer, understanding channel behavior, personalization, having information to uh, that you use to do one-to-one -one marketing, and commissioning, being able to reward your partners for what they do, and ultimately for the franchises that they have built that build your business, that help build your business. We provide a lot of insights. <laughs> Does that make sense? Colloquially speaking, a lot of insights. But I think foundationally, uh, the, maybe the most important, or certainly uh, critical, is what we call ACI, or Affiliate Customer Insights. And with uh, ACI, we can understand affiliate at the customer level, and we can understand it across channels. Now, last year, I, I provided information in terms of what we understand about the channel at a high level. Uh, we have a year's more worth of data. We have more customers using ACI. Uh, and I'll tell you what those numbers are. But the headline does not change. The headline is, this is an incredibly productive channel, and affiliate shoppers do more. So the latest data shows that uh, affiliate drives 14% more new customers to brands annually than any other channel. Affiliate shoppers have a 5% greater purchase frequency. Affiliate shoppers have a whopping 28% higher AOV. This is an incredibly pro uh, prolific channel. And with ACI, if you don't have it, it provides you a strategic vantage point into the channel compared to other channels. And because we can do this at such a granular level, you can run smarter programs, higher growth programs. I'm proud to announce in the next short few weeks, we are also adding to this solution 
the ability to measure channel incrementality. I don't know, the hallelujah? Okay, I don't know. <laughs> well, that is the quintessential question that you hear every day. And, and I've heard it, you know, when I was in CPG land, what's incremental, what's incremental, what's incremental? Um, so uh, we'll now be able to measure the incremental lift for those consumers who engage in the channel on conversion, uh, frequency, AOV, compared to consumers who don't. We can ultimately answer the question that advertisers had that say, you know, what does affiliate do for me more than if I did not have it? And by how much? We can do so accurately and we can do so transparently. So that's coming in the next uh, short few weeks for those folks who have enabled ACI. Uh, a few weeks ago, if, uh, if, you, if you don't know about this, we also launched something called Affiliate Customer Journey. And Affiliate Customer Journey uh, delineates the consumer path to purchase for every single pub publisher level interaction across transactions over time. What that means is we'll get a full holistic view of which partners drive productive traffic, brand engagement, sales beyond last click. So we're excited about that. One little nugget, and it's a nugget, maybe it's a bigger than a nugget, but to nosh on is that what we have found when you see uh, more than one partner in the path, AOV goes up. So think about what that, the implications of, of that are. I think it has some interesting implications. Personalization. That's been my mission from God uh, for a while now. Uh, <laughs> so we've been hard at work on that. I talked about that last year. I'm proud to say that we, we also uh, officially announced the net-wide launch of our personalization on Monday. Uh, if you want to know more, I think you can talk to CJ folks. They're pretty well-versed. We do have some, again, Discovery Lab sessions that talk about this in a more uh, kind of detailed fashion. But first, I'd say a few things. One is, I think it's a fair statement to say that we're the first scalable, fully customizable, one-to-one -one personalization for the affiliate channel. I'd also like, I also think it's fair to say that this is a huge greenfield opportunity for the channel. Think about it, when a consumer goes to their favorite publisher website, they're looking for resources to make a decision when they're in the active mode of buying. Is there no greater uh, context for personalization to work? If we add personalization to the mix, I think we can do more with what is already a productive channel in terms of sales, but I also think when, when we look at how we can do this tactically, we can improve brand loyalty significantly. And obviously we're doing this within, a, in the, within the, the, the confines of privacy. Finally, this all works together when you can reward your partners appropriately. So we have a, currently a wide, wide array of commissioning capabilities. Uh, we have new repeat, we have booking conclusion, we have view through, click through, sale, uh, we have single website, multiple partners, we have too much for my head to hold, to hold and so I'll go so on and so forth if you don't mind. Um, but we've been enhancing those capabilities, uh, we've been expanding those capabilities, We've been doing so for the last several months. We've been working with select advertisers on that. We're in the, we're in the process of, of a network-wide launch on that. So I can say to any advertiser that if there is a business parameter that will drive uh, better growth, will drive better profitability, we'll be able to enable it. So a lot going on at the company that we're excited about and still focused on our core mission of really driving customer-centric marketing and enabling everybody. I said this would uh, hopefully be short. I hope it's sweet. Um, but I have a simple statement, act now. So again, for the delinquents out there, 
get this cookie list tracking in place, please. All right? Um, the other act now is, and I don't mean today, but I do mean Q4, and I'll tell you what I mean by Q4. But if you want the type of insights I described, if you now want to be able to do channel incrementality, if you want to enable personalization that, will, that will, uh, will add to this channel and be able to do things that you always thought you could do but couldn't do, if you want to enable uh, forms of situational commissioning, you have to do one simple thing. And, and by the way, if I haven't articulated well enough, which is very possible, talk to CJ folks, because they generally can articulate things better than I can. You have to do one simple thing. Change your integration to our most advanced offering. That's it. So when I talk to advertisers, and we start talking about things we want to understand, things we want to do, it inevitably goes right to, what's your integration? That's it. It goes right to the integration, because generally speaking, we can do so much. So you can't act now. But what you can do, instead of forgetting about it, is put in Q4, in your plans, put it in your backlog, so your tech teams can get this done in Q1 and enable what I think is contemporary today and not nice to have, but need to have. Really simple. I'd, I'd, I'd love to go to a meeting where everybody says, these are things we want, and by the way, we've got the integration in place, so we're looking forward to doing this. So without further ado, uh, first of all, uh, I hope everyone has a wonderful CJU. So cheers to CJU, uh, hopefully as productive as pros uh, possible and as fun as possible. Uh, the other thing is, um, and so that's that. Then the other thing is I'd like to introduce Dan Heath as our key guest note speaker. We're excited to have him here. Dan is an academic, he's an entrepreneur, he's a best-selling author, and he's a highly credited speaker and thinker. These are all things that I want to be when I grow up. Um, clearly, I'm not making it. The, uh, currently, he's uh, a senior fellow at Duke University, supporting entrepreneurs who fight for social good. He is the uh, founder of ThinkWell, which is an innovative educational company that uh, is cele has celebrated its 20th year anniversary last year. Uh, he is, he's published four highly influential business books with his brother, Chip. Uh, the latest book is The Power of Moments. And so The Power of Moments is about these brief experiences that, that, that change us, that jolt us. And the, the question is, how can you use these moments to create a better connection with your brand? And, and in some instances, I would argue, you're, you're actually, these moments actually make you think about running your business in a better way. So I think it's very apropos for today. And uh, so again, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Stan Heath, and thank you very much.